Hope I got that right. Um, so welcome to our session about uh, enable GPU virtualization in OpenSAC. Um, I'm Howard Huang. I'm from Huawei. Uh, I'm currently a standard engineer and uh, open source community manager. Um, and this is Lei Zhang. Big China. Yeah. China on the stage. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, could you introduce uh, my name is Lei Zhang. Uh, I'm a cloud software engineer at Intel. Uh, I'm also a core of Searchlight project. Uh, below is uh, Feng Shaohe and uh, Chen Yingxing. Uh, they are my colleagues at Intel. They contribute a lot uh, in this great work, but unfortunately they cannot come, so I'll, rep uh, I'll represent them to give a speech. Okay, so. Uh we too will uh, give this joint presentation uh, on this topic. Um, so first of all, motivation, right? Why are we talking about GPUs and OpenSAC? Uh, well, with GPU, I, I think uh, we are using GPUs uh, today in an uh, unfathomable way. Uh, back to the days like uh, we only consider CPU as the main compute resource. Uh, for example, uh, for, uh, for automatic driving, uh, for example, we have uh, Tesla, Google, and Uber, and many companies working on that. And also we have like Joe uh, Hart uh, working on his version of uh, Comma AI, I think. Uh, it's a open source uh, self-driving. So to enable that, uh, many solutions involves using the GPU uh, to accelerate uh, either the computer visioning uh, for the car as well as the deep learning uh, algorithms that, uh, that is used in the self-driving system. And another example is video streaming. Uh, we are living in an age that video, uh, video streaming is everywhere, right? Uh, I think other than the six second buying or uh, some short videos, we also, uh, we are now used to like streaming uh, a movie or like uh, Netflix TV shows uh, online. And GPU is vital for you to uh, watch a high quality video uh, online streaming uh, in a uh, tolerable way or should I speak? Uh, so the third example uh, here is cloud gaming. Um, so uh, I, I think many uh, young people now uh, are, are, are uh, uh, enjoying the uh, cloud gaming on, on either Steam, I think, or, or other platforms. So nowadays it becomes uh, more and more popular that uh, online gaming is hosted on a, a cloud infrastructure and GPU is also the key uh, for that to happen okay so now uh, we all know GPU is important and we all know we use it uh, more and more uh, in various uh, industries so how about the GPU virtualization uh, do we really need that uh, we believe that the, the virtualization of GPU uh, will also become more and more important. Uh, for example, if you have like a VDI offered uh, on the cloud, or uh, uh, media transcoding, or uh, like the cloud gaming I just mentioned, uh, you need multiple tenants that actually sharing the GPU resources. And uh, we think that there are three aspects uh, that we need to take into consider uh, when we talking about GPU virtualization. So it's performance. Uh, we need direct acceleration to uh, make sure the performance uh, is okay. And ca uh, capability. So we need a constant, for example, if we, if we are streaming videos, we need a constant, uh, consistent visual experience. Uh, and the last one is sharing. So 
the multiple virtual machines on the cloud uh, should be able to share the GPU resources uh, in a like multi-tenancy way. Okay, and uh, last but not least, why OpenSec, right? Uh, since we are in the OpenSec Summit, I, I think uh, this is the easiest one to understand. So OpenSec, just, we just celebrated our uh, 14th release, Newtown. And uh, OpenSec has become a de facto uh, IAS uh, uh, standard, if you will. Uh, and the community is just booming. And I think if any of you uh, is working within the community, you know uh, it, it is really a great experience to, uh, to, to, to be an OpenSec developer, uh, to discuss and share ideas uh, within the project or cross project. And now for Newton, uh, we have like more and more features enabled, and we have a growing uh, uh, official projects or uh, core projects uh, in OpenSec. So OpenSec is, will be the idea platform uh, to have uh, GPU virtualization enabled uh, to support the uh, cloud computing. Okay, so uh, my colleague from Intel will uh, take over on this one. Okay. Yeah, uh, I will give an uh, introduction about uh, Intel GPU virtualization. Uh, here is our overview. Uh, there are currently three ways to do GPU virtualization. Uh, the first one is called API forwarding. The, the VMs and uh, uh, DirectX and OpenGL API. Uh, the uh, hypervisor just forward these APIs to a virtual graphic driver. And then the graphic driver forward API to the physical GPU. Uh, this is not very efficient way to do things uh, because uh, most of things is rely on the software layer. And uh, uh, it cannot expose the full features of APIs uh, to the VM. But uh, uh, from the sharing point, uh, this can share uh, GPU to many VMs. Uh, the second way is called direct pass-through. Uh, we can see that a physical GPU is attached to a single uh, VM's graphic driver. So this is very good performance way to do things because uh, a VM uh, is using the whole physical GPU and it can use all the features uh, GPU provided. But uh, this is now called sharing because uh, you can see one physical GPU is mapping to a single uh, VM. And the third way is uh, what we are working on. It's called full GPU virtualization. Uh, uh, a physical GPU uh, can uh, split uh, into uh, multiple uh, virtual uh, GPU drivers, and each uh, GPU is assigned to a VM. And from this way, uh, it can gain a, a near native performance, uh, and uh, it can use almost the full features of the GPU. And uh, uh, <coughs> It can share to some VMs. Uh, one physical GPU can uh, support up to 15 uh, virtual GPU. Oh, sorry. And uh, uh, here's the benefits of our technology. Uh, from perform performance views, uh, we can get uh, almost 80%, uh, uh, more than 80% of 3D performance, more than 70% of native 2D performance, and the media decode more than 90%, uh, media encode more than, more than 80% of native performance. 
Uh, we, we also support many features. Uh, you can run native drivers inside a VM. And below is the uh, uh, media API we support, including DirectX, OpenGL, OpenCL, Media SDK, and DirectX 12. And uh, uh, about the sharing, uh, uh, as I said, uh, you can uh, uh, attach one uh, uh, physical GPU to uh, max 15 uh, virtual GPU, and each virtual GPU can attach to a VM. So also we support uh, the many uh, guest OS, like Ubuntu, Windows 7, Windows uh, 8, Windows 10. Uh, this is uh, the status of our implementation of GPU-G. Uh, to use this technology, you need to use uh, at least uh, from the uh, E5 uh, V4 platform. And we have done some work for Zong and KVM, uh, Zong GT, KVM GT. Uh, the features are already finished. Uh, we are going to up them, upstream them soon. Uh, uh, next, uh, here is what we are going to do in the future. Uh, we want to make these features more cloud-friendly to, to improve, uh, move it into OpenStack. Uh, first one is we want to make support for live migration for virtual GPU devices. So if uh, a VM is uh, going to do a live migration, it can ensure uh, VM get a uh, same performance GPU after the migration. And the QoS support in cloud uh, environments, we want to make sure that uh, the uh, virtual uh, GPU uh, don't affect it by other VMs. Okay, thank you. So teams from uh, Intel and Huawei we are also looking uh, into how to make sure that OpenSec uh, will support uh, the GPU virtualization features. So naturally, the first option uh, we are considering is to have uh, Nova to be able to support the GVM, uh, the KVM GT uh, feature. So uh, I think this is the a natural uh, uh, method that comes into our mind. Uh, basically, we have libword calling into the uh, vGPU, and uh, so treat it as a, 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 a special PCIe device, I think. But there are some shortcomings. So uh, if you treat a uh, vGPU as PCIe device, uh, you could have like now uh, Nova uh, to manage it, but uh, VGPU are not really PCIe devices. Uh, it just, uh, many of the features uh, that we usually get from the PCIe devices uh, might not satisfy uh, what we need from VGPU. And also, well, this is, I think, before uh, Mitaka. Uh, it, it is very complicated uh, to add a new type of resource uh, in NOVA. Uh, you have to consider a lot of things and to modify a lot of things and have the project, and have the project team uh, okay with that. But starting Mitaka, uh, NOVA has, de uh, has developed a new feature called a resource provider. So basically make uh, life easier uh, for new resource types like uh, vGPUs to be added uh, to NOVA. And uh, I think from Mitaka, uh, uh, the, pro uh, the resource provider work starts from Mitaka and Newtown uh, also have the following uh, blueprints implemented. Uh, but we believe still uh, it, it's still in the early stage and uh, we believe that this is a very good direction uh, from NOVA. Uh, another option we are considering is that to have a dedicated uh, OpenStack service that actually 
dedicated to man to to manage these accelerators. Uh, either uh, GPU, FPGA, uh, IPsec cards, and so forth. So this is the proposal uh, that we uh, we have a individual uh, or standalone OpenStack acceleration service that no one scheduler could talk to. Uh, the acceleration service actually making the the scheduling uh, decisions uh, for the GPU resources, and then feed it back to NOAA scheduler, and then uh, NOAA scheduler NOAA scheduler uh, tells NOAA compute like how to uh, provision the resources uh, on the V on the VGPU. So this is another option we are looking at. And with regarding this new uh, acceleration service, uh, we temporarily call that Nomad. I will discuss it a little bit further later. So in this way, uh, one of the uh, advantage of this option is that uh, the virtual GPU or like further FPGAs could be treated as a dynamic resources. Since it has this dedicated uh, management, <coughs> you could uh, just have like different flavors for different scenarios for web service, for VDI, uh, media transcoding, and uh, the, con the f configuration will be very flexible. And you could uh, like uh, just configure the, uh, the most optimal uh, scheduling uh, algorithms uh, for your GPU resources. Okay? And regarding the uh, Nomad project. Actually, we had a uh, Bob session back in Austin Summit regarding uh, this project. <laughs> so uh, the, Nomad, the Nomad project actually born out of uh, requirements coming from the telco industry. So when we uh, when we were doing uh, Etsy uh, ETSI, uh, that's a telco center organization. When we doing uh, ETSI standard regarding accelerators, we find that. Many customers uh, demand that uh, that different kind of accelerators should be uh, should be able to uh, form a standalone uh, resource pool and should be treated as equal to the compute resource, to the storage and network resources. So that's where the requirements are coming from, and uh, so we we uh, establish uh, this project. Uh, from like ground up uh, from zero uh, this year, and uh, the goal for the well, we temporarily uh, codename Nomad before uh, HashiCorp guys beat me up. Uh, we'll change it later. Okay, so the goal of uh, this new Nomad uh, module is to be able to provide a unified uh, management framework for different kind of. Uh, accelerators, for example, as you can see from the slide, uh, crypto, uh, IPsec, uh, uh, which is uh, important, uh, has important usages uh, in NFE and FPGA, uh, Intel and IBM, and uh, uh, most of the important vendors have FPGA solutions, and GPU we just covered, and also NVMe SSDs. So many customers use it as a uh, just dedicated accelerations for certain, for example, latency sensitive uh, services, and also some intelligent NIC, uh, maybe from Broadcom uh, or other vendors or others you could add. And uh, I know that when we start to talking about oh, offering a uh, unified, like a, a, a unified interface for a certain set of resources, uh, it definitely will be difficult because those accelerators uh, acts uh, very differently from each other. So what we want to achieve uh, for Nomad is to have a, a higher level of abstraction that provide a common, uh, common entrance, uh, if you like, uh, for the end users uh, to be able to schedule the uh, resources, uh, the acceleration resources, and uh, uh, for their workloads. And, and vendors uh, 
might be able to define their own like uh, uh, private solutions for uh, specific algorithms on uh, how to best uh, schedule the resources. So Nomad just provide a common framework to uh, to to enable that. And uh, we have been had uh, sparse discussions uh, within the project. So uh, now um, we believe that we are generally uh, we'll be dealing with two types of acceleration resources. One is that it's embedded or uh, like sit uh, very close with the CPU. So with that type, I believe uh, we're still counting on Nova uh, to be able to provide uh, uh, the core scheduling decisions. Uh, and for the another, the second scenario uh, we are trying to dealing with is the standalone for example, you have a uh, remote uh, connected uh, FGA uh, pole or whatever uh, array of uh, GPU cars. So that scenario would be a typical uh, or ideal uh, scenario for Nomad to uh, to provide this service. Okay. Okay. So future work, uh, as Lei has had already uh, illustrated. So on the GPU side, uh, there will be further support on the uh, libvirt option. And uh, uh, Citrix implementation already have a patch on that. Uh, we are also looking forward to have a Nomad implementation that would reflect on the GPU resources and uh, a uh, generic solutions for uh, graphic virtualization. And we have some uh, resource links. For example, you could, you could get the source code of uh, KVM GT uh, from here. And also, uh, so the, the, the other enhancements are coming up, actually. And also, we have a uh, work session, design summary work session for Nomad project, uh, actually, on Friday morning, starting uh, 10.50 uh, in room 130. So, uh, feel free, uh, just uh, you are more than welcome to participate uh, in the session and you could uh, search session on the schedule as well. We have a uh, etherpad, so feel free to provide your input on the etherpad. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, questions? Okay. Uh, could you use, uh, sorry, could you use the mic? <laughs> uh, the, they're waving at me. <laughs> Hi, so when you're Hi. sharing a GPU among multiple virtual machines, um, obviously you're time slicing the CPU part of that. But the other resource that's scarce on a GPU is memory. So do you time slice availability of memory or do you partition the memory between the virtual machines? Uh, so uh, you mean uh, how we participate the uh, memory, right? Yeah, how do, you, how do you make the memory on the GPU available to the, the client VMs? So uh, uh, the, uh, the VM is uh, uh, turn into a, a virtualized uh, GPU, the G, uh, physical GPU, and uh, that GPU is attached to a VM, so uh, it will uh, leave to the uh, hypervisor layer to handle this. So it's behaves uh, like conventional memory, it's allocated, it's, it's split into sections and each VM gets a subsection of, of the yeah, memory. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Why he's walking over, I may ask already my question. <laughs> Thank, thanks a lot for the talk. Um, I saw that the number of guest OSs, or the type of guest OSs that you have, is limited to Ubuntu and some Windows types. Um, what is actually limiting you there? So for instance, I'm specifically thinking about like CentOS, for instance, uh, or RHEL. Um, is it the kernel version that they come with, or? Uh, not uh, because uh, uh, we are working uh, List is uh, what we have already supported, but uh, future, uh, fu in the future, we will uh, support it more guest OS. Okay. Uh, 
do you do you plan in uh, future to support other uh, VGPU vendor like Nvidia or AMD? Uh, uh, well, well, sure. For uh, from Nomad's pr uh, perspective, we want to support all kinds of uh, GPU and like from Nvidia or AMD or yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, if there's no further questions, then thank you very much for attending this session. Uh, you have a good day. <laughs>